Hey everybody, welcome back. So today, home buyer sentiment hits the lowest level ever at 19%. Now, some of you are saying, George, why are you saying that now is the time to strike if you're a buyer? Okay, we're gonna go over some of the metrics and we're gonna talk a little bit about what to expect. Now, understand, we live in a very volatile point right now and it is, well, it's rather interesting because some of the historic ways of measuring the uh, the economics of what's going to happen, well, <laughs> like in the 1970s, which a lot of people are starting to compare the 2020s to, like 2022, uh, is going to be a little bit different because the, the 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 graphs that they use, what is called the Philip chart, it, it's, it's not even applicable. I mean, it uh, kind of throws it out the window. But anyway, so let's talk a little bit about why it's still a great time to buy. Okay, so I'm going to going to keep this one on the on the buyer side somewhat simple all right here's the thing our inventory is horrifically low okay even though we took a massive jump in inventory on Thursday a lot of people say well now hang on a second George you said you said that Friday was the day that people list their homes yes but <laughs> here's the difference uh, it was Friday the 13th, and there's a lot of superstitious people. So on Thursday, boom, the, the MLS blew up. Uh, we took in a whole bunch of homes. Where This is the number one highest week, 2,178 on our seven-day running average. Okay, some people are like, oh my gosh, that's incredible. It is, and, and we will take those off, but there's a couple of things that are gonna come into play, right? So buyers right now is a fabulous time to get out there because there's a huge influx, you like that? A huge influx of homes that are on the market for you to choose from. And that is just Pierce King and Snohomish County. And that is a big, big number, which is awesome, all right? Now, here's the thing, yes, we have seen quite a bit of volatility with the bonds. Uh, we also put up the, the $9 trillion balance sheet. Understand that some of this volatility is coming from the feds who have uh, indicated that they are going to start tapering. They're gonna start selling off mortgage-backed securities and other mortgage-related debt so that they can start getting that off of the balance sheet. And it's gonna be about $9 trillion. Now, Here's the good thing. So the feds are making money on that, right? Okay, not much, but they're making money. And as we, we see some of this, that gives the industrial investors, well, it gives them a little bit of angst. But because remember the 10-year treasury and the bonds and mortgage-backed securities, those are publicly traded, they're starting to see maybe just a tad bit of stability. So we've seen rates actually come down just a tiny bit. Uh, I think uh, today, four and a half percent uh, that's that's down basically a quarter of a percent. This is a little. There's a little bit of a buy down to this. Uh, Dan and I were having a great, great, great conversation, uh, and you know this is one of the big things we looked at. Even owner occupied came down off of six percent, down to five point seven five. That's a big deal. So we've seen some of that volatility benefit you as a buyer. Okay, plus more inventory. That is a great reason to make sure you're sticking with it. Hey, there's a lot of buyers that are backing off saying, hey, oh my gosh, I got to stop because we're going to be, the real estate's going down. No, it's not. There is a problem. We don't have enough inventory for it to go down. There's, there's, there's not much to, to fall down to. <laughs> yes, we've seen a big increase, but you know what is also really funny? This is normal. It is normal market time uh, to see inventory coming on. This is part of our spring market. This is normal. Why? Because funny enough, and I, I think I discussed this a couple of weeks ago, where we would see just about mid-May, mid we would see a big bump in, in uh, inventory coming on just before three key things happen. Three. Three key things. And it's so funny because all of, you'll get a ton of sellers that come on the market right as the three key things come into play. And so this is something for a seller to keep in mind. 
a buyer to capitalize on. Okay. All right, here we go. We got Memorial Day coming up. And I can tell you that as Memorial Day, which is a long three day weekend and a lot of people travel and everything else, people's focus on real estate goes away, right? They're focused on, <laughs> I get a vacation. I get to go someplace, it's gonna be sunny. They're starting this already. I already hear it already. Hey, just wanna let you know, George, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be gone at the end of May and uh, you know we're gonna, we're gonna be on vacation, okay? Um, that means that their brain's already there and they're already starting to step back, okay? Don't be surprised if you're a seller and you just came on market, totally normal. We're about ready to hit our, what I call the real estate ghost town. It's where historically, except for 2020, because, <laughs> because we were already home, we step back between the end of May to the 4th of July weekend. Why, do, why such a large timeline? Why the month of June? Well, first of all, we have Memorial Day, which is basically May, June, right? Okay. Then kids, students get out of school. And you might say, well, I don't have a student in school. Okay, well, that's fine. But still, vacations and students getting out of school, summer mindset, hey, I want to go someplace. It's nice. It's sunny. I'm going to go do something. It, 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 it is just, it, 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 wait, it is what it is. <laughs> because that is what happens, that historical seasonal slowdown, okay? Then we, boop, we hit into the 4th of July weekend. And I guarantee you, because that's also a long weekend, people are always, you know, banking on vacations, things like that. And again, their mind exits real estate. However, post July 4th, we get those buyers back and they come back pretty much in force until the middle to the end of August. Why? You guessed it. We reverse these, right? Then we have Labor Day weekend. Ha, go figure that one. Then we have our kids and students getting back in school. Okay, that's a transition. And then we also have, whoop, uh, so we have Labor Day, we have get back in school, that's it. Uh, and then, so we roll back into that and it isn't until about mm, middle, late September, more October, that the buyers return again. Why? Because they're out. They're last minute vacations. Got to get kids back in school. Uh, we've got uh, a holiday, another holiday that's, uh, that's tied into that. And so we stack all of that in a very tight timeline. So the real estate kind of does this, which is normal. Now for a buyer, during these times, there's an absolute fabulous time to capitalize on the market because there's a lot of buyers that are out there, buyer fatigue, whatever it is, their perception of whatever's happening in the world. They think that, you know, the market's going down when it really can't go down. Even if the, the market improves 4% from this point to the end of the year, which is our expectation, that still gives us a 10% return this year. We're going to see 4 or 5% next year. Sure, it's going to taper off. Uh, because put up the uh, home sales projected to decline chart. We've got charts, we got graphs, we follow it all, right? Even Fannie Mae is following the same methodology, the same logic that we are, or maybe we're following Fannie Mae. Nah, they're bigger than I have. They got a lot bigger. That, that head shed is a little bit bigger than mine. <laughs> anyway, so as we take a look at what's going to happen sales volume, that's to be expected. Why? We'll get into that in a little bit, but understand, when we take a look at what can happen today for buyers, it's perfect. This is gonna be a perfect storm for you guys. Uh, just understand there's, you know, watch your rates, make sure you're getting qualified, right? Okay, for sellers, you need to have a very clear expectation on price, okay? And the timing so that you're gonna see fewer buyers. Don't be surprised, okay? It is normal. Just remember, watch last week's when we talk about marketing. This is where marketing is super important, okay? And I cannot stress that enough. Marketing is not putting your home in the MLS. That's like having, you know, uh, uh, you know, food goods in a grocery store. Of course it's in there, that's like the MLS. But you have to target, you have to market, you have to advertise to take them to that specific product. That is what marketing is, that is what we do. Putting in the MLS is not marketing, that's a given, okay? Nabisco has to put their stuff in the store for people to even see it, but they advertise, right? It's just not a Nabisco thing. It was just pulled it out of my head. All right. So 
as we take a look at this, we had a massive bump in Nuon Market, right? Big, big bump, as we can see right here. Biggest bump ever, which is awesome, all right? Uh, when we come down here, year over year, our pendant are down 4.4%, which is a really small number, actually. It's, I think it's like 800 ohms. Uh, here, we're down just a tad bit, only 0.2 for the same month, year over year. But we're already up 2.7. Now, remember, last week, this was 5.8%. So we've dropped this down 0.4% already. So we're already starting to, again, get that in. And remember, last year we had super low rates, okay? We had more inventory. Well, until now, we had more inventory last year, until now. Now, is this going to be, again, another very active, very progressive year? The answer is yes. Hands down, interest rates are going to go up. Yes, why? Because the feds are tapering and Fannie and Fannie. So here's a, okay, sidebar here really quick. Let's talk about the logic, right? When we talk about investors and we talk about uh, Fannie and Freddie, okay? So Dan and I were, were uh, uh, going back and forth on different things and we were talking about owner-occupied at four and a half and not owner-occupied at 5.75, but mortgages under, I wanna say it's uh, 674,000, 675,000, okay? Did you know that that rate is actually 5.5%? And that's because those are governed by Fannie and Freddie. And because they are tied to the uh, mortgage-backed securities, which is at a higher rate because they're not rallying very well right now. So those rates are higher. To get a jumbo is cheaper. <laughs> Can you go figure that one? Who would have thought? Let's see. Lower amount, less risk, higher interest rate. Doesn't make sense, but there you go. So understand, you need to understand that the, the rates that are going up and down every day and is another classic reason why each week you need to get re -pre, you need to get re pre approved. All right. So that you know where you're at because they're changing. You know, do I need to pay points? Do I not need to pay points? Do I look at other options? Here's an example. Arms adjustable rate mortgages are actually up 11%, uh, right? They're at a, uh, 14 year high because people are looking at it saying, look, I'm not going to be in my home for 30 years. I'm going to look at a seven in one arm or a 10 in one arm or a five in one arm fixed for five years, seven years or 10 years because I'm not going to be in my house that long. So I'm going to get a better rate, especially when you look at 1%, 1 point, 1% in rate difference, which translates into thousands of dollars. So understand we've seen a big resurgence of the adjustable rate mortgages because they're not going to be in their home that long which is a business decision you need to have with your mortgage lender. Okay, make sure that you're applying for that every single week. Before you make an offer, know exactly what you're getting into. We had a client almost make a false start. Steve and my team made sure that they checked. Lo and behold, hey, uh, had to pull it back a little bit to make sure that uh, we protected them. They were absolutely ecstatic because they realized, whoops, well, we, we, our qualification changed a little bit, so we need to adjust our price point. Hey, listen, everybody got a $100,000, $125,000 haircut, okay? It's a given. All right, now just make the adjustments, and how do I do that? Is that money each time out of my pocket? Do I do a buy down on rate? Maybe I just look at a lower price point. So as an example, uh, lumber prices actually came down, this sounds like a huge number, 30% from the beginning of the year. But understand, we're still way high on cost of materials. But for builders, then that opens things up uh, to give a few more incentives to buyers. Uh, because even on their side, they're seeing uh, things tighten up, okay? When it costs more, but there's only so much price threshold that people are willing to consider. And that is a, that is a serious balancing act, okay? All right, let's get back here. When we talk about the seven day running average, we had 1,570 that came off, a little bit less than normal. Normal meaning the last, say, six weeks. However, totally normal for today. Why? Because realistically, this number is going to bobble about this, might even, and don't be surprised, might even start heading downward as we deal with these three, what I call the trifecta of days off mindsets. When I say days off, it's a brain vacation because people are adjusting to different things, whether it's vacation, whether it's students coming home. I had to say students because not all kids are, you know, college kids come home, right? But we have to make adjustments in our life and our schedule and, and what's going on and, 
and it just takes a back seat. Look, it's normal, so don't panic, all right? So the other thing is when we start going through and we start taking a look at the solds versus the solds here, month over month, they're actually up, which is as expected. They're actually technically, this is a lesser down, right? Because last week was 5.8, today we're at 5.4, okay? So that number will start to play a little bit of catch up and we'll add some mustard to it too. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, if you have any questions, post them. Oh, almost forgot. Uh, Doug asked me a question. He's like, George, do you really think that we're gonna start to settle out at 6% towards the end of the year for mortgage interest rates? My answer to that is probably yes. And the reason is that as we have the feds taking and tapering off and selling off to give stability to the mortgage-backed securities, because the feds have been buying it. Your government's been buying billions of dollars every month, okay? They're gonna start selling off $30 billion. I think we've become immune or desensitized to how much a billion dollars is. Uh, you should go back, look at what it takes for a billion dollars. I think like a billion dollars, you know, one dollar bills stacked on end, I think goes to the moon. That gives you, you know, a little bit of perspective. There are other, uh, you know, analogies that are used to say what a billion dollars is, but it's a bundle of dollars, okay? A thousand million dollars. That's a lot. That's a lot. And they're going to sell off 30 billion per month just in mortgage-backed securities. So... That's a lot. And they're going to continue to taper to give that stability. Feds are gonna continue raising rates on short-term. Remember, the feds do not have anything to do with long-term mortgages, only short-term. Your HELOCs, home equity line of credit, your car payments, you know, your car loans, your credit cards, things like that, uh, business loans, things like that. That is all based on what the Fed rate is, right? Prime plus. Anyway, just understand that that is going to play a big role in the perception of the industrial investors and what they do. Uh, because again, remember your 10 year treasury, your two year treasury, your mortgage backed securities, your bonds, those are openly traded on the market. And that is what dictates what the interest rates are going to be. So as they improve mortgage interest rates come down, but as they see a lot more volatility and those values come down, interest rates go up. Okay. So, if you have any questions, please post them out there. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and post some really, really good information over here in the next couple of weeks regarding what to do with inspections. There's a lot of sellers that are now pulling back saying, well, I don't need to do an inspection. That's a, there's pros and cons to that. We're gonna post some information on the pros and cons for a seller to do an inspection. Uh, for a buyer, never buying sight unseen regardless. So either a seller inspection report or buying one. Uh, through an inspector, super smart, never buy a property side unseen. We're going to be posting some additional information. In the meantime, you guys have an absolute beautiful day. It's, uh, well, it's sunny, it's rainy, it's sunny and rainy. I guess it's May weather. In the meantime, you guys have a beautiful day. I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.